Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tom's Gadget Garage. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing an unboxing overview as well as first ride of the newly released Apollo Go. Now, I'm really excited about this scooter for three reasons. First, this is a full suspension, dual motor, electric commuter scooter that weighs in at just 46 pounds. Yes, you heard that right. 46 pounds. That puts it at over seven pounds lighter than its biggest competitor, the Segway 9Bot Max G2. And that brings me to number two, which is that the Apollo Go is a major competitor for the Segway 9Bot Max G2, which is arguably one of the best commuter scooters on the market today. Now, I recently did a 500 mile review of my experience riding the Max G2. So if you wanna learn more about that, check out the link in the description below. And the third reason why I'm really excited about the Apollo Go is that it's a beautifully designed scooter with a pretty impressive spec sheet. So without further delay, let's get this scooter out of the box. We'll get it assembled, we'll go over all the details, we'll charge it up and we'll take it out on our first ride. Now, before I get this scooter out of the box, I do want to let you know that this video is not sponsored. I actually bought this scooter with my own money. Now, one thing I want to mention when looking at this box is that this scooter does support riders up to 265 pounds. I think there's a misprint on this box because it actually says uh, it supports riders up to 330 pounds. And then on the sticker uh, on the side of the box, it actually says it supports riders up to 100 kilograms, which is 220 pounds. But the official figure from Apollo is 265 pounds. All right, so let's get this box opened up. Nice thing about this box is it just opens up actually really nice. You don't have to worry about tearing up a box to get this out. And it's got this uh, foam cover here, branded Apollo. It's probably overexposed on the video, but that is okay. And then uh, let me bring you in closer to show you what I'm seeing here. All right, so a quick peek at what's in the box here. Of course, we've got uh, the Apollo Go scooter nicely wrapped in plastic. Uh, we've got our charger here, which is a two amp charger. And this is a 15 amp hour scooter. So you should be able to charge this up from zero to 100 in about seven, seven and a half hours. Uh, we've also got our uh, instruction manual here as well as some hardware and then a quick setup guide that goes over all the functions of the scooter as well as how to get it set up. Uh, there's also a toolkit which we'll look at here closer in a moment. We've got our handlebar set which we'll have to assemble here uh, and that's about it that's in the box. So we'll all get this thing pulled out and we'll go over everything individually. All right, so that is the Apollo Go out of its packaging. Uh, and when I pulled it out, I realized, wow, this thing really is light at 46 pounds. Uh, this is gonna be our head unit or handlebar assembly which will be attaching to the stem uh, with the hex bolts here momentarily. Uh, and this is some of the stuff that was in the box. So here you've got some end cap covers for your turn signals in the event that uh, you drop your scooter. Uh, you've got a wrench, you've got spare screws, bolts, and all that fun stuff. Uh, and you can actually see here, they've got a parts list, which is really helpful. If you ever need to replace anything, you probably uh, have what you need here. This uh, is the Allen key set. And then you've got this little manual pump that you can use. And of course, there is a valve stem adapter. I don't really like these. I prefer the, uh, the chuck adapters. I'll actually link a video where I cover that. It actually makes inflating tires a heck of a lot easier. Uh, we've got a quad lock mount uh, for your phone, which I actually bought a phone case with a quad lock mount. Never used one before, uh, but I got that uh, phone case, which we'll be using with this scooter. And then of course, uh, uh, here we have got uh, this uh, basically redundancy uh, for the locking mechanism and we'll go over that here. We've got our instruction manual, uh, of course our two amp charger. So like I mentioned before, seven, seven and a half hour charge time. Uh, and then we've got our uh, hex bolts, uh, quick setup guide and all that fun stuff. All right, so I went ahead and removed the scooter from the table and I put it down lower here on this block. And what we're gonna do now is get this stem extended, locked into place, and then we'll get the head unit and handlebars bolted in with the provided hex bolts. All right, so the latching mechanism on the Apollo Go is pretty robust and it's really easy to use. Simply lift the stem, you'll see this hook here. It will lock into place and then you just lift this up and clamp it down and it's locked. And to undo this, you simply push the red button, pull it out, uh, and you can fold it back again. But we'll go ahead and keep this closed. Uh, Apollo does provide this safety strap, uh, which actually hooks onto a mounting point here. Just wrap it, not around the wire, but around the uh, actual stem, and then lock this into place. 
and there you go you've doubled up on safety and you're all set all right so in terms of the head unit and handlebar assembly it's actually pretty straightforward you simply insert this into the stem now there's going to be some wires you're going to want to make sure that you fish those in and uh, gently place the head unit on making sure not to pinch any wires and then just make sure visually inspect uh, that the bolt holes are properly aligned and then simply insert the six hex bolts two on either side two on the rear uh, and tighten them accordingly and you're all set with that now if you're curious what the latching mechanism looks like here on the back end uh, when you fold the stem down there's actually uh, this magnetic clip that comes out and you can actually insert it into here and it locks into place and when you want to unlock it you simply push this button lift secure the latch and you're good to go all right so there is the go in its fully assembled form we've got the head unit handlebars attached uh, the stem extended locked into place so that's what the scooter looks like it's a pretty nice looking scooter so we'll go ahead and uh, zoom in on some of the features here tell you all about it all right, so we'll start at the top and work our way down. One thing I do want to mention is that uh, Apollo did attach this quality assurance card uh, signed by Violet on January 24th of 2020, basically going over all the features and functions and making sure that this is a functional scooter before shipping it out. So I think that's a really nice touch. Uh, here is, of course, the handlebar assembly, and the Apollo Go has end cap style turn signals, which I really like because if you've got a wider grip on the scooter, you're less likely to cover these up. Up, where some other scooters might have these kind of inward a little bit more which makes it more likely that you're going to cover those up with your hand um, of course we've got our brake lever here we've also got a built-in a bell which sounds like this and one thing I'll mention about the brake lever is that it actually uh, controls the drum brakes on this scooter as well as the regenerative brakes that you actually have in both wheels. Uh, this scooter does have a dedicated regen brake um, throttle mechanism here, uh, which is really nice because if you want to slow down um, but conserve energy, recharge the battery, you can actually use this lever to slow down uh, instead of using the the drum brakes which you know drum brakes are absolutely fantastic because they are super low maintenance but if you have the option to brake electronically why not so these are uh, really nice we'll absolutely be putting that to the test um, here you've got a mode button which will power on the scooter momentarily uh, you've got your left turn signal and of course uh, your right turn signal over here uh, as well as a power button to power the scooter on uh, and then right here we've got our throttle, uh, which you know you can press. It's really actually got a really nice feel to it, uh, but that'll get you going. Now here at the center you've got uh, a dot matrix display, uh, which is here. And dot matrix displays are really nice uh, because they're much more visible in broad daylight, whereas a lot of LCD screens are uh, quite honestly really hard to see in direct sunlight. Uh, or if you're wearing something like polarized lenses in some cases. Uh, right below that screen is this quad lock system that allows you to mount your phone. Now, the scooter does come with an adhesive adapter that you can slap on the back of your phone, or what you can do uh, is buy a quad lock case for your phone, which I have, which allows you to put your phone directly onto the scooter. So the way the quad lock system works is pretty simple. You simply align your phone and once it's in place, you turn it, you lock it, and this thing isn't going anywhere. Really nice that Apollo is integrated with the quad lock system. Uh, one thing I will mention is that a lot of people like to get real time stats, uh, driving information, all that fun stuff directly on screen, which you can absolutely get with the Apollo app. So you can track your distance, your mileage, your speed, all that fun stuff. Uh, another thing that I want to mention is that because it does have the quad lock system, you don't have to worry about bulky phone holders attached uh, to the handlebar assembly, which, you know, looking at it right now, there isn't much space because you've got this really big head unit here and you've got not only your throttle, but you've got the throttle for the regen system. So there's not a lot of real estate there anyway. So it's really nice that you have the quad lock system in place uh, to mount your phone to. And of course, something that you saw earlier with the latching mechanism here at is uh, so this is what you can uh, open up to fold your scooter and latch it into the deck and of course you've got uh, magnets here and there and you can lock it into place and another thing I want to mention is this is all metal so some people are curious what the materials are this is all metal 
Uh, this here is plastic, plastic, you know, you've got your rubber, uh, and then the stem, of course, uh, is metal. And as we work our way down, uh, we'll see that the cable management on this scooter is actually really quite nice. They've got everything routed and wrapped here uh, through the stem assembly and going into uh, the frame. Of course, uh, this is the latching mechanism uh, that we looked at just a little bit ago uh, with the extra safety strap, uh, basically to double up on uh, safety precautions there. And as we work our way down, you'll see you've got your charge port here. It's got some rubber um, that'll meet uh, the actual port itself to help with a uh, water tightness, which by the way, on the Apollo Go is IP66. So it's got industry leading uh, dust and water ingress protection, which is super important for any commuter scooter because you know, the weather's not always ideal and sometimes you might run into inclement conditions. You wanna make sure that your scooter is as watertight as possible uh, so that you don't end up with a bricked unit because of some electrical malfunction. The battery on the Apollo Go is a 36 volt, uh, 15 amp hour battery, so that's 540 watt hours, which, you know, Apollo claims this scooter will go upwards of 44 miles on a single charge, which is really impressive. Uh, real world range, they quote between 20 and 30 miles. So that really just depends on the riding mode that you're in, how much you weigh, whether you're on flat ground, hilly terrain, the kind of terrain that you're riding on, all that fun stuff impacts range. Now, I will be doing extensive range testing on this scooter, so we'll see exactly uh, what we get in real world test with somebody like me riding it. Now here up front, we've got the first half of our suspension, and this is the front coil spring suspension. So if we move this out of the way, you'll see the coil springs there. It's not a hydraulic suspension. It's simply a coil spring suspension. I believe there's some rubber dampers in there uh, to help with recoil and bottoming out. Um, this here is the fork uh, for the wheel assembly here, and this is a plastic uh, cover if you are curious uh, what this material was made of. Uh, so it's covering up some uh, beefy metal under there. Uh, the fender assembly is also uh, made of plastic. Now the wheels on this uh, scooter are nine inch tubeless, uh, puncture resistant tires, which is really important because the last thing you want to be doing is changing uh, tires on scooters. It's uh, quite a bit more difficult to do than it is on something like a bike. And so puncture resistance is absolutely important to have. Now, this is also the location of one of the two motors. Now, each of these motors puts out 350 nominal watts and up to 750 watts of peak power, making for a combined 1500 watts of peak power potential. So that should make this scooter ideal for hill climbs, which we will absolutely uh, be testing out. All right, now if you're curious what the top speed on this scooter is, Apollo claims up to 28 miles an hour, which I think is really in that sweet spot for electric commuter scooters. Now, looking at the deck on this scooter, uh, first thing I noticed, it is a little narrow, but it is actually a really long deck with a little bit of a kick plate here. Uh, so we'll see how comfortable that is to ride. Um, looking down here, we've got a really robust looking kickstand, which actually folds and blends into the frame. So I think that's a really nice touch. A lot of times when you look at scooters, you just see these like, um, you know, regular uh, small bike looking uh, kickstands that, that don't blend into anything. They just kind of hang off the side. So it's nice to see that they've uh, cleanly integrated that uh, into the frame. This of course is the uh, lock uh, unlock button for the folding latching mechanism for the stem. And this here actually doubles as a handle when carrying the scooter, which is really nice because sometimes scooters are just a little awkward uh, to carry around. Now, working our way to the back here, we've got our rear 350 watt nominal, 750 watt uh, peak motor. And uh, of course, we've got our fender assembly here, which is also plastic. Um, these attach to these uh, metal supporting arms here on either side of the scooter. And this here, uh, this swing arm is actually made uh, completely of metal. So there's no plastic covering on this that is uh, solid. Uh, and of course, as you can see here, we've got our uh, drum brake assembly. So that uh, brake handle that you pull up front actually actuates this for the drum brake. And if you ever need to adjust this, the beautiful part here is you just twist this and you'll be able to adjust that to your liking. Uh, so really nice touch from Apollo.
Now, one last thing I want to mention back here on the scooter is it's actually got quick connects. So if you ever do need to replace a tire, um, you can simply use this quick connect and disconnect the motor uh, from the power source, which is really nice to have. All right, so looking at some of the lighting on the scooter, of course, in a moment, we'll power it on and take a look at it all, but I just want to call it out here real quick. Of course, like I mentioned before, we've got our end cap style turn signals. Here under the head unit, you've actually got a headlight, and then just below that, you've got this ambient light, which I think is a really nice touch uh, by Apollo because night visibility is key when riding any kind of scooter. Uh, if we work our way to the back, uh, you'll see that it's actually got an integrated brake and tail light combo as well as integrated turn signals, which is huge because, you know, there's a lot of scooters that have turn signals up front, but not in the rear. I personally like signals up front in the back to maximize visibility for other people that might be driving around you. All right, so let's go ahead and power this scooter on. I'm going to go ahead and press and hold the power button. And there's that dot matrix display. And there we go. The scooter is powered on. Now, Looking up front, there is that headlight that I was talking about right there. Looks pretty bright. We'll uh, do some night rides, see how it looks. There's that ambient light I was talking about. That is really, really bright, which is going to be really important for uh, night visibility. Uh, coming back uh, to the tail end, of course, the tail light there is blinking. So we need to go ahead and bind this scooter. So we'll go ahead and do that now. All right, so now I've got the Apollo app open and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this scooter. So I'm gonna go ahead and click add new scooter. Okay, I am absolutely ready and it is searching for the scooter now. Apollo go, scooter's found. We'll go ahead and click on that. It's connecting to the device. Connection successful. All right, continue. Checking motor, checking battery, nice little you know graphic here that we've got going. It's checking the brakes. Checking earth gravity pull. That's hilarious. Rocket launcher, all right. Element 115 tank level. Flux capacitors. Checking nitrous. Airbag system. Yeah, I wish. All right, we're gonna go ahead and give this name, uh, this scooter a name. I'm gonna go ahead and call it The Go. Okay. And I'll go ahead and set up my super secret pin. All right, once your pin is entered, it's gonna say, is everything okay with your Go? Please examine the scooter, ensure everything is secure. Take a close look at all the components, connections, and wiring. So we went ahead and did all of that uh, when we did the overview of the scooter, so everything looks fine. And then there's a nice little video for riding instructions. And of course, you can go through and watch this uh, as you set this up. Uh, I'll pause that for now. But that is the app setup experience with this scooter. If you want to change drive modes, it's actually a single quick press of the power button. So that's, that's eco mode. Click it again. That is comfort mode. Click it again, we are now in sport mode and you click it again, you're back to one. So if you wanna change your drive modes, simply quickly press the power button. All right, so the scooter is back on the block. Let's go ahead and test this motor function. A kick to start is off, so let's see what we get here. All right, rear motor works, front motor works. That's good, let's test out the turn signals. So there's our turn signals here as well as in the rear. So you can see those, so that's pretty nifty. Turn signals on the other side work as well, so that's awesome. Uh, there's our tail light glowing red, and when you hit the brakes, this thing actually blinks. So that's really nice uh, for visibility. Now in order to turn on the headlight on the scooter, you simply single press the M button, and that'll turn on your headlight. If you double click on the M button, That'll turn on the ambient light. You want to turn the ambient light off and just have the headlight running? Double click on the M button. There you go. You want to turn off the headlight, single click the M button. That's how your lights work. Now, if you are curious what the braking is like on this scooter, I'll go ahead and spool this up. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the brake lever. And you can hear that drum kicked in. Now, let's say you don't want to use the drum brake. Let's get spool it up. 
And this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the regen lever and that stops it immediately. You don't hear the drum kick in. So that's the beauty of this Apollo Ghost is you have the option to choose how you wanna break. You wanna conserve energy, charge up your battery with a little bit of regen, absolutely you can do that. Or if you wanna use the manual break in combination with the regen, you can absolutely do that as well. Also, one thing I rarely see in scooter reviews is a view of the bottom of the scooter. So here you go. There's some information about the scooter, it's production number, batch number, all that fun stuff some of uh, the you know, safety warnings and all of that. And then of course there's the bottom uh, part of the swing arm. So that's what the bottom of the Apollo Go looks like. It's the first time I ever showed the bottom of a scooter on a review, so there you go. All right, so now that we've got the unboxing and overview of key features complete, I'm gonna go ahead and get the Apollo Go charged up to 100%, and we're gonna go ahead and take this scooter out on our first ride. All right, so we've got the Apollo Go fully charged up and we are on our first ride this morning. And uh, so far, this scooter rides really smooth. And now I am in sport mode. I do have that max speed unlocked and uh, we're going 26, 27 miles an hour according to the uh, display. And uh, one thing I noticed really quickly is that the throttle is very responsive, like in a really good way. And it's got a really smooth, throttle response and so that's something that i'm really liking about it um, it's also pretty awesome to hear both of those motors spool up although they are very very quiet and uh overall you know these shocks are doing surprisingly well now this scooter as i mentioned before has a front coil spring uh, suspension and a rear rubber uh, spring block so i was curious how that's actually going to feel when riding around and uh, so far, it's actually really smooth. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. Now, in terms of the deck length, uh, as I mentioned before, it is narrower, but it is a pretty long deck. And honestly, I don't have uh, any issues at all with my foot position on here. It's actually really comfortable. Now, one thing I do want to mention, you know, we'll be testing out the regenerative brakes, but I was going through the Apollo manual last night, and they very specifically say that, uh, you know, when you have a 100% charge on your battery, they do not recommend using the regenerative brake uh, throttle until you get to about 90% battery, because there is a risk of overcharging the battery. So that's definitely something to take into consideration. Um, you know, if that is the case, if that, you know, that's something that they're explicitly calling out, you know, I would think maybe in the future they would prevent the usage of that, you know, um, up until you get to that 90% mark, just to avoid that. Because, you know, I know that, you know, you're supposed to read the manual. I don't know that everybody's actually flipping through all of those pages, so. So that would definitely be something that uh, would be nice to have software-wise just to prevent that in the first place. Uh, they also recommend that if you're going you know, on really long downhill uh, grades that you don't overuse the regenerative braking uh, because it could cause you know, potential you know, overheating and stuff like that. So you know, anyways, we're going to be putting this scooter to the test here uh, over the next uh, several days and coming weeks. Uh, tomorrow I'll actually take this on. I'm contemplating either doing a range test uh, or a hill climb test out at South Mountain Regional Park to test the uh, dual motor capabilities of this scooter out to its fullest. Uh, but we'll see. I haven't decided yet. Uh, it's been raining uh, like crazy over the last day or so, so it finally let up. Uh, I thought about taking this out in the rain, but on my first ride I'd like to listen for any squeaks and creaks and all that stuff and the last thing i need is water slapping around preventing me from doing that so anyways so far very smooth ride on the apollo go now one thing i do want to call out is that the handlebars uh, on this scooter are about two inches narrower than the segway ninebot max g2 so wider handlebars do help uh, improve control of the scooter so I do notice that my hands are definitely inward a little more than I would be on that other scooter. 
uh, but uh, it is comfortable. The grips are very comfortable. Um, one thing that you do benefit from having narrow handlebars is going to be portability. When you have super wide handlebars, it's just it's not as portable. It's clunky. So if you ever have to use this as a last mile commuting solution uh, and need to stow the scooter away somewhere, it would be more difficult to do with wider handlebars. So there's pros and cons of uh, having wide handlebars. All right, let's test out the acceleration here. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. You know, the acceleration is pretty solid on this scooter. It does have two motors that definitely help it out in that department, but I'll tell you what, this has to be one of the smoothest throttle responses of any scooter I've ridden. So really impressed with that. It feels like it's really dialed in. In terms of control, it, the scooter definitely feels very nimble. You can definitely uh, swing it around. So that's a plus. Here we are on this on these pavers here, and I'll tell you what, suspension's doing a really good job of uh, absorbing those little impacts. But yes, this scooter has no problem getting up to speed, so. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, you know, how this does range-wise. Uh, this scooter does have the same size battery as the Segway 9Bot Max G2. The biggest difference here is that it weighs about 7 pounds less and has dual motors. So it'll be interesting to see how this does from a range perspective. Uh, I am, you know, contemplating, you know, what speed I'm going to do that range test in. Um, with the 9Bot Max G2, uh, I usually... Uh, put that into 20 miles an hour uh, for my range tests and uh, I think I might do something similar with this scooter given that it's got the same size battery it'll be interesting to see uh, what power consumption looks like uh, with two motors versus one now granted the 9 by Max G2 does have a 450 watt motor whereas this scooter has two 350 watt motors so we'll, we'll see how it works out but uh, you know, my gut is telling me that from a range perspective, um, you know, at the same speed, this will likely get a little bit less range given that it's powering up two motors. All right, I'm going to go ahead and give these brakes a quick test here. All right, not bad. So that was uh, using the uh, drum and regen brake combo by pulling the uh, brake lever here. So, you know, pretty decent stopping power you know it's not uh, you know amazing but uh, it's definitely um, good enough I'll say that uh, here in a moment now that uh, we've uh, consumed some battery we're gonna go ahead and test out uh, the regenerative brakes here and we'll see how those perform oh yeah regen brakes are on point so those are actually really effective. I've never used a scooter that's got a dedicated regen brake lever. So uh, pleasantly surprised by the stopping power out of that. So I can definitely see myself using that on a regular basis. Let's, uh, let's try it again here on this turn. Oh yeah, that's solid. All right, let's take a look at what this acceleration looks like from a stop. at 20 25 all right not bad not bad at all definitely solid for a commuting option
All right, what I'm gonna do here in a moment is I'm gonna go ahead and pull the app out and we'll use the dashboard mode and that'll give us a better idea of what our battery uh, percentage is. Um, one thing I am noticing is that, you know, of course I'm riding around at pretty much max speed the whole time, so that's definitely having an impact, but I am seeing these battery bars uh, disappear rather quickly. Uh, so we'll see in the app what percentage we're at and uh, yeah, ultimately, you know, in terms of range and everything, we'll test that out on uh, the official range test that'll either be uh, this coming weekend or next week. Uh, we'll see how things pan out. All right, so I went ahead and got the app uh, attached to the scooter with the quad lock system. Seems pretty solid. And so what we're gonna do now is uh, take a look at our battery percentage. So right now, 64% battery remaining. Now, one thing I wanna mention about the Apollo Go is that it gives you the ability to set the maximum speed in each of the drive modes. Now, it's got three drive modes, Eco, Comfort, and Sport. And, you know, out of the box, a lot of scooters will, you know, have Eco mode set at like six to nine miles an hour, which I'll tell you what, it's, it's, it's really slow and I never see myself ever using one of those modes. And so I like to, you know, set the uh, eco mode to 10 miles an hour, sport mode between 16, or comfort mode between 16 and 18 miles an hour. And then of uh, course, sport mode, we just let it rip. So nice that you can actually go in there and set those top speeds so that, you know, you can make uh, those drive modes more suitable for your own liking. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and test out these regen brakes again. Yeah, these are solid. I think uh, for probably 90% of the braking that I would normally be doing, the regen brake is gonna be more than sufficient for my needs. All right, and once again, in terms of maneuverability, this is a very nimble scooter. So you can definitely throw this thing around comfortably. Now, one question that people are gonna have is gonna be around the nine inch tires. Now, ideally with scooters, the bigger tires, the better, especially if you're riding on rough roads. Uh, so far, uh, these nine inch tires, I, I really haven't noticed any kind of major difference between this and my typical 10 inch tire scooter, but generally speaking, you do want bigger uh, tires. I know there's a lot of scooters out there with eight, nine, 10 inch tires, and then uh, some pretty, uh, awesome options out there with 11 12 and even up to 13 inch tires but uh yeah with this uh you know they seem sufficient for my needs right now i haven't run into any issues so now one thing i do want to mention on this scooter uh, is that i'm driving around here in this parking lot of this shopping center and uh, i'm riding over some pretty gnarly cracks in the road and one thing i'm going to mention here in terms of suspension is uh, it does absorb those impacts reasonably well. I think better than your average scooter, absolutely, with suspension. Um, how this compares to the suspension on the Ninebot Max G2, uh, it's not as plush. The Ninebot Max G2, I think, has a much more plush ride uh, compared uh, to this Apollo Go. Uh, so, so don't get me wrong, suspension is uh, is really nice. Uh, it is absorbing the impact, but on some of those uh, more aggressive bumps and cracks in the road, uh, the Ninebot Max G2 definitely has the advantage. Now, for a lot of the little stuff, like the little, you know, uh, separations in the um, panels for sidewalks and stuff like that, these little cracks in the road, the little stuff it absorbs beautifully. It's just when you push uh, the suspension uh, to the extreme with some of the more aggressive uh, bumps, that's when you start feeling uh, things get, uh, yeah, not as smooth. But with all that being said, this scooter overall has much better than average suspension. 
All right, so there you have it. That was our initial ride of the Apollo Go. Now, a few things I want to call out uh, after the limited miles that we did today is that this scooter has probably one of the smoothest throttle responses of any scooter I've ever tested. So kudos to Apollo on that. Uh, in terms of the drum brakes, uh, yeah, I think they do as well as your, your average scooter, of course, coupled with regenerative braking. So uh, brakes are, are pretty decent on this scooter. What I really do like, though, is the a dedicated regen brake uh, throttle lever that they give you there. And I think that's really effective for, let's say, 90% of uh, your typical braking scenario. So that's a really good way to pump juice back into your battery while you're riding and less wear and tear on those drum brakes. In terms of ride and comfort, the suspension does really well. Uh, I think it's much better than your average scooter. So uh, I'll be honest, I'm pretty surprised at how smooth it is for being a simple coil spring up front and a rubber block with integrated springs in the rear. Another thing I want to mention about this scooter is that the motors operate almost silently. And so it's, and you know, when you first spool up and start accelerating, that's when you hear them kick in and then they just kind of blend into the back. Background. So really quiet operation on the motors. Um, the handlebars are narrower than the Segway 9 Bot Max G2 by about two inches. And so for me, I like to have a wider grip. So it would have been nice to have an inch extra on either side, but you know what? This is more than sufficient. Uh, I am able to throw the scooter around and carve in the middle of the road nicely and uh, not have to worry about any kind of control issues. Uh, looking at the tires, they are nine inch tires. And so uh, they are smaller than your typical typical commuter scooter, uh, but that does help with weight. Um, ultimately, we'll have to see how this does. I didn't have any issues with the nine inch tires on my ride today. Uh, and so when we do our range test, hill climb test, uh, we'll have the opportunity to test those out uh, on a different types of terrain to see how it does. In terms of max speed today, I was just testing it out with the display and the app. I was able to get around 26 or 27 miles an hour. And keep in mind with all my gear, I'm like 205 pounds or so. And so that's definitely something to factor in. This scooter will support riders up to 265 pounds. Uh, so the lighter you are, the more performance you're going to get out of this scooter. And the final thing I want to mention about this initial ride is that the deck, although it is narrower than a lot of scooters, there is a lot of space lengthwise. And so I had no issues at all whatsoever with deck comfort. Uh, really happy with that. All right, so wrapping this all up, what I'm going to be doing here in the coming days is a full range test as well as hill climb test. We'll go up to South Mountain, which if this scooter can do it, uh, we'll hit all three uh, lookout points up there, which is about 2,000 feet in elevation gain. So stay tuned for that. Uh, what I will also be doing is taking all of my ride experiences with this scooter and culminating it into a full end-to-end -end review. And of course, as I always do with all the scooters that I test, uh, is I'll be posting long range reviews after two. 250 and 500 miles of total riding. So I hope this content was helpful for you. If you're interested in this scooter, there are some links in the description below. Uh, if you use those links to purchase this scooter, it does help keep the wheels turning on the reviews with this channel. And if there's any questions that you have that you want answered, uh, let me know in the comments below because I'll absolutely try and address those with all the rides that I do uh, prior to coming out with the final review. So I want to get all your questions answered. Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for tuning into Tom's Gadget Garage. We'll see you next time.